You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. The TV. After TV. On the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Bridge After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Bridge After Show. Hey guys, and welcome to The Bridge After Show with some creepiness as always. And why does every character in this show end up being super creepy in some way? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> it's part of the show. But guys, across from me, a new face here with us today, Tommy Rosero. Welcome. Hello. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. And as always, the lovely Paige Sullivan. Yes, hi everybody. And guys, I'm Dave Klein, and we should probably jump right into this episode because we gotta get to that main plot point at some point, but we're gonna leave you hanging, just like a good TV <laughs> show does, just like the end of this episode did. Yeah. Because we gotta, we gotta get to that eventually. So let's go ahead and start with our good friend Ray. Such a good guy. Oh, Ray. Yeah, what a great Stand guy. Stand up, gentlemen. Stand up, Ray. Where did she find this guy, by the way? <laughs> I think he's from college or something. It's got to be something like that. Because they obviously used to be a fling. And it's weird. Her husband dies. She calls him, and he comes running. Like, what have you been doing with the last 20 years of your life? Nothing? I mean, do you think it was Do you think it was payback for uh, Marco, you know, already having a wife? Or do you think she's using Ray to, like, for some raider plot? No, I future? think she's using... Ray to make herself feel better and now he's just kind of somebody who is taking over the role that Carl played in her life now she doesn't have to deal with the stuff she doesn't want to deal with she doesn't want to talk about the tunnel she doesn't want to know about the tunnel so now Ray does that yeah and I think it's also just like a whole depression mindset where I mean her husband just died and she's just trying to find something to fill the space mm -hmm. so something that's comfortable something that's easy so she goes back to an ex because it's comfortable it's easy and he I, came running real fast. Yeah, he came I'm running sure real fast. He and hopped on that plane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, as you said, Paige, a lot's going on with his life, apparently. And then he also, uh, so now Tim comes over, too, with his ice cream truck. Full of machine guns. Full of machine <laughs> guns. That's my type of ice cream truck. Right. Those are some treats. He's a, he's a strange guy. He seems very calm for somebody who is basically, you know, screwing over a good friend. Or what you would assume to be a good friend. Well, I mean, he's got to play it straight, you know? Otherwise, he's going to give something away. So. No, I know, but, I mean, not everybody is that great at it. I thought we would detect, like, a hint of something. Like, Ray wouldn't see it, but we would because we knew. But he seems pretty, you know, calm. Well, well you have to wonder how close of friends they really were. Maybe they were just business associates. Mm -hmm. No, because she knew who he was. Oh, that's true. That's a good yeah. point. Valid point. Charlotte was like, hey, Tim. Point to page. Why are you so here? <laughs> hey. It's yeah, that, I like that, too, that Charlotte just immediately, once she sees him, she knows something's up. She's just like, oh, this well, The again. ice cream truck probably gave it away a little bit, though, I mean. Well, yeah, yeah, that, too. <laughs> and so creepy. Oh, I love the kids. Like, okay. Yeah, like, that's the joke you're going to make. Like, that, oh, yeah, that's because that's so much better than selling guns. I know. He's so weird. <laughs> like, what you, hmm. Yeah, but so Ray just trucks these things through the tunnel himself. That must have, that wouldn't just, how long is this I tunnel? I was just about to say that. It's got, I mean... It has to be long. It's got to be somewhat long. I was thinking that. I was thinking the exact same thing too. I'm just like, that's got to be like a. I'd imagine that would take a week to walk something like that. Well, especially with a uh, box full of guns. Guns, guns. and he and did weren't there multiple, multiple guns. boxes. Yeah, he did. There was like stacks of them, at least four. They must literally live like right on the border. Like here's the border, and right, yeah. Well, if you think about it, every time there somebody's in a, in a different side of the border, it's a quick commute. So I mean, it's mm -hmm. got to be somewhat close. Right. Yeah, I guess. Well, at I, least in TV time. I've never been to, yeah, in TV time. <laughs> I've never been to that specific borders, I can't say, but I'd still imagine that, like, I mean, coyotes usually take, like, weeks to get their yeah, people across, you know? Yeah, but they're not underground. Know? Sometimes they are, though. Sometimes they have to go across sores to get, like, across the United oh, States yeah. and places and things like that. It takes a long time, but I guess this one is a very close opening. It must be. I mean, who knows? I mean, that's... We'll never really know. They're not going to lay it out for us. But Graciela just eating her chicken... Not wanting any uh, pleasure this time around. She's getting pleasure the food way. Maybe Ray wasn't good the first time around. Or, yeah, maybe he just wasn't good. Maybe, yeah, he maybe well, didn't do what she wanted. As we learned from Charlotte, that's not necessarily his... Oh, no. Well, we don't know if that's his talent or not. 
Oh yeah, when she said that one line about he had other talents. Yeah, or yeah, something. he had other talents. Yeah, I don't know. I just find it creepy that he was even like, "Don't you want me to like he do was, that?" He was into it. I know. Yeah. I think he liked it. He's a strange guy, He's that Ray. Strange fellow. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, she didn't mention anything. <laughs> I know. Off it's the like, hook. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Here. Maybe he's sick of Charlotte already. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know why. Yeah, I know. Sick of Charlotte, so I'm going to go for Graciela. <laughs> it's upgrade there. Yeah, well, he gets out with his. I love how he's lying about the money now. So now he's making money off of Charlotte. And he's not even. He's Oh, it's laundry. Yeah, but it's good that she finally saw through his bluff, basically. At the end, she wouldn't kiss him and let him make it up. And she's like, come on, how many times do I let you down? And she's like, a million times a lot not letting him charm her out of it but here's the thing she's saying i want to be legit and i want you to be legit too legitimate in what sense of the word because you're still letting people smuggle things under your land i mean she wants to be legit with graciela or i think it's just like just letting that happen but outside of that being a legitimate business person not thinking about that and just like, okay, that's going to happen in the background, but outside of that being legit and not... Because it seems like... I think he, it's hard to ask for that when she wants him to solely deal with Graciela and handle it himself. You can't ask for him to be a legit business But it seems man. like she wants a relationship out of him, too. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of on the fence on that one. Yeah. Uh, on the relationship aspect? Yeah. <clears throat> I still feel she, like she's maybe just using him for this tunnel custodian yeah, duties to, of to sorts. Yeah, to do the dirty work. Well, she's also getting the whole. She's giving him the whole sex thing too. True. So I mean, that's to me in the case. Yeah, but she, she wants seems to give that out like candy these days. <laughs> I mean, she's in mourning. She wants to be loved. I think it's nice to have an emotional or a somewhat emotional connection with somebody, or or a feeling of being loved now that her husband's passed. But I think with Ray, it's much more to do with the protection aspect because she went to Marco when that horse was hung, you know, and he's not going to deal with it. Yeah. Can we talk about real quick? How, I mean, still not not much emotion about the the horse hanging. I mean, if someone hung my horse like that, I'd be a little more upset, I think, than than she was. But that well, was... one, I don't think she cares about the horse. I think she was more scared. I don't think it was her horse. I think it was the daughter's horse. Oh, and she had it coming. Yeah. All right. No, straight no, no, no. up. I'd still be a little. <laughs> no, I think she should be upset and a little nervous and scared. I think she's just. She seems like a very strange woman. I don't know. It's just she's got emotion sometimes, and other times she doesn't. I don't know how to read her. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I, I think it really is that point that you guys have brought up, too, where it was just that she's in mourning over her husband. It's nice to have someone there who you can be with emotionally, and then she also, as a bonus, gets that taken care of where she can kind of try and forget about the tunnel existing. So yeah, I think she's those going are the out getting things. haircuts. You know, <laughs> Ryan, her Whittle, Ryan Whittleson on the chat saying, uh, or I'm sorry, Joseph Bose on the chat saying that the image from last week of Graciela and Ray, uh, he's having a hard time getting out of his head. <laughs> 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 we so, all are. <laughs> just got to concentrate. That's not something you want in your head. So I know. I even said to Dave, because we were watching it, and you know, she starts out with her back against one window, but then the, the we get a different shot with her feet the out the other. So I was like, either she's extremely tall and we don't know it, or those there's are pretty a lot. long hills. Yeah, though. there's a lot going on. Super in heels, there. super heels. <laughs> I don't uh, know. So other thing we get from this thing too is that we've, I mean, we we knew ahead of time that something was going on where uh, uh, Tim was working with the police, but we see that the revelation is that they have bugged all the guns, mm -hmm. and as they're getting put together. Gracia's men have found that out, so it has completely tracked it, them to the operation in Mexico. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, And to Charlotte, I mean. Yeah, and to Charlotte. So you have to wonder, how badly is Charlotte going to get screwed over? I mean, Ray is obviously, he's done. But I mean, how badly is, is Graciela going to be able to get out of this too? Does that mean that she has to leave her operation and find a new place outside of this chicken shop? Probably. To do business, so, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure it's going to be a bigger issue for Ray and Charlotte than it is going to be for Graciela. Because, yeah. what is it, ADP? Isn't that in America mostly? I mean, isn't it focusing on U.S. citizens and not so much Juarez? I don't know if they have jurisdiction to pursue this across the border. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't know. Just trying what, to catch gun smugglers. Yeah, I don't know what what their you know jurisdiction is in regards to this. But I I think if she's affected, it's going to be not a huge impact on her and her life. It's going to be a bigger impact on Ray. But the tunnel will probably get shut yeah, down. Yeah, and Ryan Whittleson saying Ray is screwed. And, you know, if the tunnel shut down and Charlotte somehow gets off scotch-free, she basically just won everything. I kind of hope that happens, but at the same time, she knows it's there, so she's... Yeah, she can't play dumb about it. Yeah, she can't. Yeah, well, she can. I mean, she can well, play dumb about it. She can be like, I didn't know. <laughs> what tunnel? She's like, my husband died. <laughs> it's like, uh, Yeah, yeah. and Ray was the one who made the call, too, so... 
I guess in a way she separates. It just depends on really what Ray testifies when he's caught. Yeah. Yeah. And somehow I think that he will be very open to sell her out. Oh, for sure. Yeah. He'll basically make it look like she shoveled it out herself. Probably. <laughs> I mean, he's not Maybe a she, guy. <laughs> Maybe she did. She was holding she the golden shovel. I don't know. So let's go ahead and talk about Stephen Linder, uh, who is having a, an exciting dream, and that's a that's a nightmare if I could think of any nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird because you don't it's dream like, about Fosto every night. Yeah, Fosto. Well, I do, but the other part was the nightmare. The, the part with Ava. Fosto. Ava was the nightmare. Oh yeah, Fosto Ava. laughing in your face while you're having <laughs> sex is that's what I dream about every night. I don't know. It's just weird. At first, I thought it wasn't Ava. Thank you to closed captioning for telling us it was Ava. I thought it was the girl Sarah. Was that her name from last week? I thought it was the girl from last week too. But it yeah, wasn't. it's, it's Ava. Ava. So the Ava's one... the girl who's in this picture, right? A- no, Ava's the one that he helps come across the border in the very first episode and put into that home okay, yeah, and yeah. killed her boyfriend. So that's why she said, I owe you my life, you're my king, whatever. I think he's thinking he did this great service to her. Um, and then he keeps seeing Fosto. And that's, well, what, uh, that's why I was confused. Well, it seems like, I mean, his his inner con- monologue from his own, like, from his dream is him saying, like, I deserve this. I don't think I deserve this. And kind of just going along with it. So he's kind of almost seems like he has conflicting emotions, maybe, to read into his dreams. Well, yeah, it seems like he, at all times, doesn't really know if he's doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Like, he says he helps people, but then he always seems so hesitant to say, like, what he's doing or... yeah to acknowledge what he's doing. So, I don't know. He seems like a conflicted character, but the, the, the picture he carries in his wallet is his sister. Right. So. Uh, Ryan Wilson thinks that Stephen Linder was a bit of a strange plot this week. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if it was necessarily that strange. I mean, I guess it was strange in that he then goes and talks to Darcy. And it's just well, he like, doesn't mean to t- really talk to her. He just right. wants to get out of there. So he's just like, I need a few days off. <laughs> I gotta go. You, you need to vent to someone a little bit. I mean, who else doesn't really talk to any other people? Yeah, no, I don't think he talks to anyone else. Yeah. And then, but I like his, I don't know, his character's kind of fun to me that when he finally breaks and yells at you, he's like, I can't be here! And he immediately mumbles, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be like that. <laughs> yeah, he's grown on me a lot. He was the first, I think, suspect for oh, the serial yeah. killer. Definitely. Yeah. And the sure. creepiest. And then I, I'm starting to like him now. Yeah, it's just, I think it's just his persona is hard to read. He's a much like Sonya where you're like, what is going on here? Like, who are you? Uh, but now I've grown to like him. I feel like he really is a people helper. You know, he's really trying to help other people. He's just misread, you know? We don't really know how to read him. Now, how do you guys interpret the whole Fosto dream, though? Do you guys think that's going to lead into the future? I mean, eventually they're going to they're gonna meet up at some point. I mean, he's going to keep doing what he's doing. Right. He's going to run into Fosto at some point. And he's already had two run-ins with him, you know? Uh, when he killed Ava's boyfriend, yeah. Fosto came and took the body. But didn't seem to do anything to Linder at all, from what we know. We didn't see it, but it seems like he got off kind of free. And then he bumped into him again when he was talking to the girl last episode. It seems like, uh, to me, that this dream is actually what prompted Foster, or uh, this dream is actually what prompted Stephen to leave, was because of this dream. Oh, well, yeah, that's what, I mean, the dream scared him, so now he's trying to figure it out. Right. So maybe he's worried that Fosto... I, I mean, I'm kind of reading into maybe that he thinks that Fosto's laughing at him because Fosto is the one who is behind Ava, behind all these people. So maybe he thinks Fosto's laughing at him because of all that. So he feels like he has to try and stop Fosto. I, I didn't read that. I just think he's... You know, when you bump into somebody like Fosto more than once and you know what he's known for, I think it's it's kind of normal to have nightmares about him. <laughs> I think the Ava twist is a little strange, but I'd probably be having nightmares about him just as much as uh, Stephen is. I mean, the Ava thing makes sense, though, because he did have that passionate kiss with her oh, yeah. when he oh, sent, sent him passionate. off to the, uh, the ranch. I'll, I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. I wish my kisses were that passionate. <laughs> well, for Lin- you know, Linder. For so. Linder, they are. Hey, one day. One day. We can dream. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about the start of the show, because we get this flashback to our a big character in this episode, which is uh, Daniel Fry hanging out with his buddy, not buddy, Santi. Junior, yeah. Santi Junior in a club. Daniel Fry snorting up some coke. And going crazy. Going crazy partying. And we get this introduction to Santi Junior, who, uh, stand up guy, if there ever were one. Pretty, pretty stand up guy. He doesn't stand-up. seem like a bad person. He just seems like someone who pushes the drugs and bad behavior. Because he didn't come off as like a mean 
or or violent person at all in any of the scenes we saw with him. Well, I wouldn't say he's a bad person in terms of killing, but I wouldn't say he's a good person. I'd say he's, you know, his motivation is partying and have fun, but by that, I, he leaves a wreck of terror in his path. Yeah, I agree, but I don't think, in the sense where everybody else we see has kind of purposefully done bad things to other people, right? like killing, like Fausto or Graciela or anybody like that, we see them doing bad things even marco you know cheating on his wife and yeah. now alma cheating on marco they're all intentionally doing these things for us with him it's kind of seems like he might not be that bad of a guy he might not be a stand-up guy who i'd want to take home to mom but you know <laughs> he's the bad guy I mean. yeah he's the rich he's the famous he, he just reminds me of like a a celebrity you know he's, he's partying a, a little too hard you know and that's what he is to them they're like oh he's a celebrity he dated j-lo so he's basically batman without being batman He's the Bruce Wayne oh, okay. version of <laughs> <laughs> Stick with me here. <laughs> trying. I'm he's trying. a playboy, all right? <laughs> he's a playboy. And then even when he's sitting on uh, Adriana, he immediately, like, as soon as he finds out she doesn't want to sleep with him, he's just like, I don't care anymore. Walks I away. feel bad for her because the whole time her mom was saying, when are you going to get a boyfriend? When are you going to get a boyfriend? So she obviously hasn't come out to her family about being a lesbian. Um, and then Daniel was joking with her a bit, which I thought was kind of funny that they have this banter now. They have a weird friendship. Yeah, it is nice to she's see like, that. She's like, you're a dick. And he's like, she's like, you're a sober dick, though. And he's like, well, you got a great ass. So, I mean, <laughs> that's nice to see because now that he's sober, it seems like she likes him more, even if he is being, oh, the water almost that went down close. again. Oh, <laughs> the water almost went down. But I, I don't know. I like them together. But she, I felt bad for in this episode because her mom's like, you're going against God if you don't find a boyfriend. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Daniel Daniel's um, quest for sobriety is, I think is going well so far. He's, yeah, he's yeah, it pretty seems good. Like it. Uh, so, and well, he had a seizure. We'll point that out. They say yeah. he has a seizure. Last week we were like, oh, what happened? Did he just pass out? What's going on? So, so confirmed. Uh, going back to the flashback, Joseph Boza saying that it kind of confused him at first. He thought it was done by the writers to throw us off. And Ryan Wilson saying, pretty sure Daniel got lucky in that open. Pretty sure he went from the club to commit a ho hit and run. So they're kind that's, of predicting that the hit and run might have happened right after this. Scene. Well, that's what I that that's what I assumed because it happened in 2007. We're assuming, you know, mm, yeah, six this years takes ago. place 2012, 2013, and uh, yeah, and somehow my question is, how does jumping ahead, David Tate know that he was the one who did it? Was he on the bridge? Were there tapes of him doing it on the bridge? Why wasn't this pursued? Was it because he's Santi Jr. and they didn't want to pursue it? Yeah, I don't know. We will get to that. Yeah, it looks like in the, the next on, it, there was a little bit of that. Yeah, but yeah. So, so we'll assume that. Uh, well, let's go ahead and talk yeah. about that as we get to that point. Yeah. Because that is definitely a huge discussion point. But I, I think uh, I actually didn't even notice that. I realized that, honestly, that that was well, the Well, didn't you hear moment. the screeching tires? I think it hinted well, yeah. that there was going to be an accident. I heard the screeching tires, and clearly he wasn't in a fit place to drive. But for some reason, I didn't make that connection in yeah. my head. So I'm glad that uh, you guys are all pointing out. You guys rock. Um but yeah, the other thing too is uh, I was kind of curious because uh, in the beginning, this is what where mine was my mind was at was that uh, Fry says that he left his passport and his other pair of pantalones, and as soon as Santi Junior drives away, he, he gets this. Well, he just gets this stern look of just like like something. Well, maybe he was like playing up Santi Junior or something. So I was thinking Did he like her a story. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is maybe he was like working it for a story. I don't because know anybody seemed... who goes and snorts a ton of coke and loses their pants for well, a story. Well, maybe he does that stuff anyways, <laughs> and he's willing to. But, I mean, the point is, like, his sudden snap after Santi Jr. left. Because if you were, like, you know, still in, like, party crazy mode, you wouldn't suddenly just get the stern look of, like, and then, then walk he away. gets. Yeah, walk away the way he did. So I, I thought it was just a very sudden shift. No, I, I agree. It was a sudden shift. Maybe he just you know, had a moment of clarity when he was outside of the strip club not talking to Santi Jr. and he thought, this is stupid. Yeah. You know, I should go. And the other thing with Santi Jr. is uh, that we should mention is the fact that he just completely forgot who Daniel Fry was. No, he uh, he, he did not forget, I don't think. Yeah. Well, I mean, he did He did forget something else as well later on in the did he? point that we're talking about. The hit and run bit. thing? Yeah. So yeah. maybe he just has a really sh bad memory. I mean, I think it's possible he's just so high and on drugs all the time. Yeah. Maybe or he doing doesn't all that. know. Yeah, like, he's just a party guy, and, like, people come to parties, you meet someone, he's like, oh, yeah, I remember you, yeah, what's up, man? They're just partying together, and he doesn't really That's true. think of them that well. It's just, as he said about the boat thing, like, I've had thousands of people on my boat. I don't remember who's been on my boat. He's just partying all the time. <laughs> and this was six years ago, so. Yeah. And that would make sense if it was if he was trying to just get the story, and he was just there for that 
maybe that one or two nights or something. Right. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. Maybe Daniel will give us more next week. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Or he'll get back on. Get back on it. Get back Hopefully on not. it. All right. So, uh, Marco and Gus, we got a bunch of relationships going on this episode. Uh, kind of like the relationship moment of people's relationships building in. Marco finally trying to build up his relationship again with his son, Goose. 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 And uh, we find out that Marco really wasn't the best father to Gus. No, and I think, you know, a lot of that stems from the infidelity that he seems to commit a lot. Um, but I also feel like, you know, like he said, I was working a lot. And it does seem like Sonia and Marco are 100% at work all the time. Yeah. You know, and so if that's how the case was, if, say, his marriage fell apart, previously to Goose's mother, then maybe he threw himself into work, and so therefore he wasn't there. Not meaning he's a bad dad or an absentee dad, he just wasn't there as much as maybe Goose would have liked him to be. And he's a teenager, I don't know how old he is, so I feel like teenagers and their parents always kind of had that disconnect of like wanting more, wanting less attention from your yeah. parents, and never being able to meet in the middle. Let me... Uh, I mean, sorry, Goose seems to be at that age, where, yeah. you know, it's yeah. kind of like that... You blame everything on your parents, even mm -hmm. if they're overprotective or they're not there enough. You're just you want the opposite of what you're getting at that age. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of pulled away from it. That really, I'd imagine that he was gone more than your typical father works a nine to five job. Because I mean, we see him like overnight at other places, like across the border in this case. And I think, uh, to, you know, I think the complicated thing that Marco can't seem to get out is that he probably wants to provide for his family. And that's what it really comes down to is he's trying to do what he does outside of the sleeping around. But, I mean, you know, his job. <laughs> outside of the outside adultery. That. But, but the actual job part, why he's always an absentee father, why he's always out, is because he wants to be able to provide and provide that red bike for his son. I'm sure he viewed providing the red bike for Gus as, like, this giant thing to him as a like as a good father a good father provides for their family and provide this red bike and i think that's just what the disconnect between the two of them and i mean he's really been trying to as much as he's done some crooked things as a cop he is trying to make juarez a better place and kind of do what he, little he can under the jurisdiction of his capitan so maybe that's another part of why he worked so hard or wasn't there as much as because you know he is providing this life for them that doesn't look as dangerous as the lives of other people we've seen in juarez but I mean, do you think though, ever since he's been on the the El Paso case, do you think he's been working a lot harder than he was in the the Juarez PD precinct? Because I feel like the the Juarez people, you know, yeah, they, they're pretty. But they don't back. seem as yeah, uh, as, as intense back. as the uh, El Paso yeah. PD, and I think this case may have pushed him to not spend any time in the sun and more Give him infidelity. An excuse, and, yeah. And, well, I guess he was doing that in the past too. But still, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it seems like a reoccurring <laughs> yes. thing for you, Marco. <laughs> Maybe I mean, we don't know. We didn't really get much look at what he does. Yeah, I guess it probably just depends on the case. But, I mean, yeah, you're right, because the, they are pretty lax. Because then it's like when Sonia's there finding out about, like, the suicide thing, they're like, oh, yeah, we don't really look into suicides. <laughs> well, like she says, there's so many deaths here. We don't, we can't. Yeah, but, yeah, it's like really we don't really see what Marco's cop life was like per se. But it is a reasonable assumption, I think, to say that it wasn't as intensive as it has been in El Paso. Maybe next week we'll get that flashback and see. That would be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I would, I would enjoy that. But we also get uh, the moments that you wanted to talk about, Paige, Which of way? Goose talking with Sonia. Oh, with Sonia. I just really liked this moment because we saw her laugh, very genuinely laugh at something that he said. We Apparently he's been, he sent her chocolates and he's got a crush on her and he kind of wants her to like him back. Um, we know Sonia doesn't like Goose back and there's an extreme age difference here. But it's nice to see him kind of breaking down walls with her. Why, why don't you, you know, connect with people? And she's saying it's just harder for me. It's not as easy for me to have these feelings and to be close to other people. Yeah, and I really like that line as well. What his Gus, Goose's response was was just, well, it's hard for everybody. And it's nice because like he's kind of almost. I think she needs to hear stuff like that because it makes her feel more relatable to other. And people. not only that, this is directly after Cooper says the village idiot. Oh, yeah, that's savant true. That's a good point. Why are yeah. we going with that again? So I think obviously she was having a minor freak out in the lobby of the police station, and Goose kind of brightens her day. He makes her laugh. He makes her see that she's not really that crazy and weird. I I'm so glad that she ended that she didn't sleep with him. With Gus? That would have made for probably yeah. the most awkward scene in the. Uh, I really scene. wouldn't have liked that. I think a lot of America would be like, "Good, shut this up." No. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was nice though because now Gus can kind of move on. I don't know. Every 13 year old boy would have been like, This is my favorite show. <laughs> this is my favorite show. I've got a chance. When, when, are, we gonna, detective. when are we going to meet Xena? When is she going to. I know, she's right? She's got to be coming soon. 
She creeps me out. I don't know who she is. I feel like it's one of those catfish yeah, scenarios. Yeah, basically catfish. <laughs> right, yeah. catfishing him. Yeah, it is really strange with her because all we got was that text situation and now him talking about her to her father. And I, I want to meet her and the fact that I haven't, you're right, it just kind of makes her seem like this. It was almost weird to me because when Marco was talking to Gus about her and he didn't want to really talk about her and was kind of like evading it, I was just like, I don't trust her. I, I didn't like, like her. her when we first saw the text messages because I felt like it came very out of nowhere and she was texting him kind of like well, she, flirtatious. I mean, she's jealous of Sonia. I know. But... Yeah, I took it that she was flirt- jealous of Sonia and wanted a little bit of Gus action, but he's just looking for some Sonia. Sonia. Goose, Goose likes the uh, the older ladies. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. He, he, but I think maybe, Gra- all... maybe Graciela and Gus, you know. They could... <laughs> but I was also wondering if Gus was going to get the impression that Sonia and Marco were sleeping together because she's she kept saying, your, I don't think your father would like that. And your father and I have yeah, gotten, clo- I've gotten to know your father better. And I didn't want Gus to, like, fly off the handle and be like, he's sleeping with you, too. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I was worried for a moment, too, that that was going to be the case. But it didn't but... take that turn, which I was very thankful for because I feel like we've already heard that from Alma. I'll say it took the exact turn I wanted it to take. So yeah, I was like, thank you, writers. It took the turn yeah. I was hoping for. <laughs> Uh, but a turn that did not quite turn out that way. Kenneth and uh, da- Kenneth and Alma slash David Alma. Whoa! So Kenneth still wants to be with Alma after finding out she's pregnant. And at first we think it's kind of this sweet thing with Kenneth. I mean, no, of, I never liked Kenneth. I said well, that from the well, get go. No, I'm saying sweet is in the sense like he's trying to seem like that stand up guy. Like, oh, okay, I'll yeah. be with you anyways. I'm, I'm on board with that. It right. seemed like it was like, oh, okay, this guy's all right. He's... Right. I mean, I agree with you. I didn't like Kenneth from the get go because I don't like any of the whole affair stuff, period, from either of them. Well, no, but... I the very first time we met him in the office, she still was with Marco 100%. She was talking about Gus on the phone to Marco, and then Kenneth came up, and you could tell it just seemed like he was kind of in her personal space like a little too personal a little bit too interested in her but did yeah. you last week did you not feel like you, there was a connection between i mean i feel like it was something that she needed and yeah and he I was thought, there to fill that purpose but... i thought he wanted her like was definitely actively pursuing her i i think i said on the after show i thought she was doing it for revenge i didn't oh think, yeah me too yeah, yeah so i mean i didn't necessarily feel like there was a chemistry between the two of them i felt yeah. like he was pursuing her for his own reasons yeah no that's what we both agree with that yeah. last week that but then yeah again, he did seem very genuine last week but yeah he, he seemed, didn't he didn't push the sex part yeah he her. seemed to genuinely want her last week and then again here after the whole pregnancy thing it seemed like he genuinely like honestly i was thinking like man almost got to be like a good catch for kenneth like maybe yeah, he really I mean, has like, had rough luck in love he was kind of a creepy colleague guy yeah you know? like yeah yeah I don't know, but that. tonight I still thought it was weird how he was like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> you know, he's like, okay, well, you're pregnant and married. And, and I'm not really into her. I mean, he's ready to, to go he's to like, this, I don't the care. distance. I love you. <laughs> I, got, I love you, Alma. I found it so like uh, interesting. I was like, wow, Adriana and Santi and Kenneth and Alma are all at the same party. And man, did it eventually click. But let's get to that eventually. Okay, and... everything like fell into its little pieces this yeah. evening. This was a good mm-hmm. episode with that, definitely. Well, definitely well I think together. just to go back to what we said a couple uh, after shows ago was that it was released that we would learn who the killer was way before the end of the season and that we it wouldn't be what we thought it was. So we do now know who the killer is. Yeah. We don't have yeah. him. We I don't mean, have him, but we know. I, mean, I, was I wasn't ready to, to, you to ready find to that know? out yet. No, I, I like being teased every time. Yeah. I got to agree. I, I was more of just surprised. I was like, wow, I'm surprised they just gave it to us like that. But we've been surprised about that every episode. It's like they gave up the infidelity so quick. Oh, yeah, like, that's Alma true. found out so fast about that. Yeah. And I thought that was going to last for a whole season. And you know, there's just so many things where I feel like they're they are giving, moving very they're just quickly. giving us all of this information very quickly. I mean, there might, I know, I'm still holding on that there might there might not be the full story with the David Tate thing. Like, this show's going to yeah. be over, like, soon. Like, they're just going so quick. <laughs> I'm just like, what's, what's going to happen in season two? Like, it seems like we're wrapping up quickly here. Yeah, well, who knows? Who knows? But, but every turn, I mean, every time there was a serial killer, or what well, we thought it was, else. Yeah. somebody else. Yeah, that's true. So, Dave Tate's just another pawn? Could be. No. Although the I... bees, though. I mean, that's like, well, let's go ahead and rewind a bit and talk about Sonia. Childress and Sonia. Yeah. So, Sonia interrogating Childress, who's in police custody, and Childress kind of talking about the bone saw, the bone saw not belonging to him, and Hank completely thinking that uh, this is the killer. He's like, just a little off his rocker. It was Hank and Wade, everybody, though. That's what that one thing that and surprised Marco, me. too. Like, I mean, they didn't seem like the best cops uh, that part of the episode when they were no. not even just no. entertaining the idea that maybe it wasn't. I, I was like, man, you guys are just not. Like, I know they wanted to catch the killer, but she's finding all these reasons that are very plausible as to yeah. why she's not. I'm like, 
why are they just ignoring it? It seems like these are all good reasons to me. I think they're great reasons, but we have to remember that she is black and white. You know, these are facts. We don't have proof that David's dead. We don't have this. We don't have that. Whereas Marco is saying, I went to his funeral. Well, I'm and not we... talking about David Tate. I'm just talking about the fact that they completely think Childress is the killer. Right. Well, to but me. he is. Well, Cooper, I think, is really upset, obviously, because of what happened to, was his last name Coates? Was that it? Stokes. 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 We were close. Stokes. <laughs> He's mad because he blew, you know, off well, yeah, his Cooper's head, Yeah, Cooper's not basically. in the right mind space, but I'm more disappointed in Hank. I'm like, come on, Hank. But I think Hank's so used to Sonia being like this. You know, she's always overanalyzing. She's always looking over the facts 20 times more than everybody else is. So for them, where he'd rather wash his hands of it and say, we've got him. She'd rather really know she's got him. She needs to know for a fact this is it. I mean, they've been working on this case for what? Six episodes and they're just yeah. all being like, all right, yeah, it's fine. It's done. But then they knew, and you know, it just seemed like, come on, just give it all. We, we all knew, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I just mean like the evidence that she pointed out to them seems so conclusive to me. Like, it doesn't match. And you think any cop, because even us as viewers were like, come on, this <laughs> isn't it. But what does she have? She has his word that. It's not his bone saw. But it's still just, like, the like, mentality of a serial killer. The fact that, like, everything just, like, to me, I just feel like a good cop would have looked into it more. I agree. Or, or at least listened to Sonia right. saying, okay, well, maybe. Yeah. Well, Hank kind of listened to Sonia. Well, he started. Well, that's true. He started to listen to her. Then Cooper trying to just bust in was like, why are you listening to her? <laughs> blah, blah. Yeah, he was like, shut this down. Shut this down. So I think he's more got a vendetta against Childress because of what happened to Stokes. Whereas, you know, the rest of them just kind of wanted to be done with it. I don't know. And Ryan Whittleson on the chat throwing out that he really didn't like Cooper this episode and would have thought that he'd respect Sonia more by now. And I don't know if it was, a, I think it was more of just anger and frustration. Yeah, venting. I think he's just been through a rough time. And just like Hank said, you're supposed to be taking a couple personal days. You're not really supposed to be here. So I think it's tough for him. So what we should really talk about, though, is just David Tate in general. Because you know, I mean, we started getting these hints at him this episode. And I was surprised that we'd find out everything about David Tate. But first thing that we find out is just that David Tate has all these connections with all the bodies that have been killed. Well, he first took uh, some of Childress's items away from right. him mm -hmm. and never returned them. So that's the first connection that we have. So Childress gives One. us Childress gives us that he's the reason that Sonia even looks into it. Um, and then he was Gedman's partner at one point, which is our Two. second, you know, victim. And then he went to Gina's father. Was his name Stephen Meadows? Yeah, the doctor. I think so. But yeah, um, he was a patient at Doctor so Meadows. He was a patient at Doctor Meadows. So that's the three connections that Sonia finds. Very quickly, might I add. I well, why did he kill the girl, the the young girl last week? We we still don't really know why she was killed, because it, for us we were like, what did she do? She didn't have, she wasn't a piece of this puzzle. She didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, she, yeah. Was, she was no Gedman. She was no one, and I mean, he got her father, and that's who he wanted. Why did he have to get her? Well, there's still, a, yeah, there's definitely more too, because also it seems like. Okay, this whole plot line makes sense for why some of these people died and why but others. He, it's like, yeah. but others like this, the Mexicans who died trying to cross the border. What's what's the point with that? Because like, what is his interest with uh, the border difference and all that? It doesn't mm -hmm. seem like he would have any vested interest between like, oh, there's too many Mexicans who are being ignored. Yeah, I don't know. I, I some some of them can be explained. Others are inexplicable. I don't really get where his mindset is, but, but obviously he's not in the right mind if he's killing but that people. is also what you were talking about too um that maybe there there's a lot more to find and this isn't going to be the final person that there's going to be more I mean, of a yeah, twist i think there's got to be uh, like a team or at least a few people working here in this uh serial killer and they all have different agendas that somewhat <clears throat> line up with one another yeah because childress was somewhat in on this or we think or was he just completely set up i think a little of both i mean i think he was he was a it was a pawn in a sense yeah right because i feel like he was the one who was probably actively at the scene when the Mexicans died from what I thought and then he also well also leading up to we find a body under his house right which is just yeah. his own serial killer craziness mm -hmm. right but the body was Kenneth Hastings yeah which is also pretty crazy like how did, why would yeah. Kenneth Hastings body be there well so Kenneth Hastings we don't even really know who Kenneth Hastings was in in you know everyday life but his is the body that we find underneath and then when they pull up his name they have an ID, a current valid ID, with David Tate's face on it. Yeah. That's probably what happened, though. I mean, back in the day, or six years ago, he probably killed Hastings and, and then assumed his identity, his identity right. in order to become a professor at the school that right. Alma works at and 
enact six years of revenge. Yeah, I guess right. that's how you do the identity theft. I guess that that would yeah, make sense. Yeah, kill them. Apparently, but and that's bury them. them under that's a, uh, <laughs> property. That's a pretty big uh, sloppiness on Kenneth Hastings' part, David Tate's or part, David, Tate's, David part. Tate's part, to actually like leave the body in your killer's like house. You think you would put it somewhere really random that no one ever find it? But that was a really random place, I think. It was random, but there's more random places, like the middle of a random forest or the middle of the desert that was surrounding even, that. Even Linder knows where to bury a, a body. I know, you know? I know, yeah. right? I feel like, though, you know, as calculated as his moves are, at some point he wants to reveal himself and kind of be like, screw you gotcha, to everybody. You bitches. know what I mean? This, I'm the one doing this, and this is why. And so maybe he... And, and before he even knows they found Kenneth Hastings' body, or not before... I don't know if he knows they found Kenneth Hastings' body. He leaves this bloody handprint on the on the mirror, so now he wants people to know who he is. I mean, talk about sloppy. That's talk about it. sloppy. Yeah, we, so it's intentional now. So we know at some point he wants them to know who's doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's the one who's giving them just a little bit more information at a time. I don't know. He's creepy. Just a little bit. It's a little creepy. Just a little bit. But so this proves the fact that David Tate is alive. So And more more info on David Tate that we find out is when Marco and Sonia go to the sister of uh supposedly dead Dave, Jill his of, wife. Of, of yeah, Jill his wife. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we do know her name now, but Jill's sister. And uh we find out that there was some person who Jill was having an affair on David Tate with across right. the border. Mm-hmm. And I really had no clue at first that it was going to end up being Marco. I thought it was going to be a key player. I didn't see it being Marco, but I thought it would be somebody we knew. Yeah. Maybe even Santi because of what went down. But then nice we, heard, we heard what happened. Yeah. 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 I Part don't know. She seems like a, you know, not a great wife. But There's a lot fine. of infidelity going on. Yeah. Why is this show is all about infidelity, apparently? It really is. Yeah. It's, everyone. Yeah. Nobody's faithful here. <clears throat> Sonia, but she, she's yeah, <laughs> was, yeah. Is Sonia gonna call back the dude from the bar or what? We don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We don't know. We haven't seen him. He's the killer. <laughs> no, no. No, I don't think so. But yeah, I don't know. So Jill, Jill and her son though also we have to mention were killed, and that's kind of when things went bad for David Tate, which led to his suicide, right? Or non-suicide. So you also have to wonder if he knew about the fair going on, because that's a lot of trips to Mexico. Seems pretty suspicious to me. And, mind you, he was in the FBI. I'm yeah, sure he, he had a way of keeping tabs on her. But he was probably having an affair, too. I mean, with, you know, with the rate yeah, of infidelity yeah, right, right, going on the show. Yeah. But I guess the way it affected... Uh, well, the way it affected him. Maybe it's just the kid. I don't know. But, yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that really is, like... That's what set everything off for him, was this moment in time. This is a crucial, crucial moment in time. So, uh, we end up at this party. And Video take a soul. Video take a soul. <laughs> Where um, first you have we have um, David Tate is still playing Alma, yeah. and now at this point it seems like uh, to me at least I think that he's actually just being with Alma for revenge on Marco. I don't think he has any interest in. I mean, sure maybe he'll get some pleasure off of having sex with her, but I think it's purely for revenge on Marco. Purely, purely for that. Well, now that we know, obviously. Now that we know about like David Tate, he was seeking out Alma. Yeah. So, but he's with her, and then he leaves to go upstairs, and uh, yeah. So he meets up with uh, Junior, whose name I'm Santi. Santi. Santi, Santi Junior. Junior. Thank you guys. He meets up with Santi Junior in the bathroom, and he has purposely planted himself at this party in order to find Santi Junior. Go take care of you know, meet him fifteen minutes, and then just straight up murder Santi Jr., revealing that it was Santi Jr. who had, in fact, done the hit and run on his family and was the killer that night. Yeah, so, he says you clipped a Honda on the bridge. You know, they died. Don't right. you remember that? But, I don't, you know. Santi Jr. not remembering at all. <laughs> and then he puts his hand in the blood and puts it on the window, which would clearly indicate who he is because you could do a sample on the fingerprints on the window. Yeah. What? He's revealing what? himself. Uh, so, and he leaves a bead. We have to remind. But a bigger bead than the normal yeah, bead. Yeah, like the biggest. So bead. Joseph Boza, th- or Ryan, Joseph Boza thinks he's a dumbass. Uh, or it's sloppy. Some of them think that he's sloppy. Watch our base thinks that he's a dumbass. Ryan Willis is saying not sloppiness or dumbass. They think that he wants to be caught. So as I, you were saying, yeah, Paige. Yeah, I think he does. I think he is intentionally letting them know who he is. 
Yeah. I don't think he wants to be caught. But I, I think, think he wants right. them to know who yeah. he is. I think he has a master plan. And he leaves the biggest bead of all. So now we finally found out what these beads are that have been left on all the killings. Yeah, so Marco kind of gets like a flashback of himself in bed with some lady friend who turns out to be Jill and she's wearing this necklace and the necklace is made up of a bunch of beads and that's what he's leaving everywhere. And so Marco, you know, proceeds to throw up everywhere and freak out a little <laughs> bit um, and kind of confess everything to Sonia. Yeah. So, yeah, it turns out that as we get this big reveal, Marco was the one cheating on uh, David Cross's wife. And while he was working with David. While Not he was, yeah, else. while he was working with David. Yeah, that's a great point. And now all those beads are uh, Jill's necklace. There's got to be something else going on with David. I mean, that's the accident probably set him off, but I feel like before that there was some well because all the other things that are going down you know with meadows or gedman those you know those are different it's not just about his family it's yeah he's out for revenge on a lot of people yeah yeah that's true because yeah it's tons of people it's not just marco it's not just uh ruiz or marco ruiz it's not just yeah marco ruiz but it's not just santi it's yeah it's just every single person who has some sort of flaw i mean maybe that was the jumping off point for him when his wife was killed and he found out his friend was sleeping with her who knows but obviously it's more it's about much more than that he's just going person by person it's like he's checking off a list of people maybe he read the uh writings by our original serial killer and Childress. started to believe it for by children's oh, the, the dialectics yeah maybe he somehow started like <laughs> believing into those maybe i don't know it's just it's strange to me but i also want to point out marco <laughs> didn't say to sonia about the necklace Right. So Ryan Whittleson, by the way, throwing out, letting us all know, Marco broke the bro code big time. Yes, he did break the bro <laughs> code. He broke the bro code. But he's broken the totally wife code agree. and the he's a code father breaker. code. Yeah, he's breaking a lot of codes when it comes to sex. And he's lying now because he didn't tell about the necklace to Sonya, right? But will he break the partner code? He, no, he didn't tell the necklace, but I don't know if he necessarily, I think he, in, I, I don't think know. He, if, you think he intends kind of, to? I think he should. Well, I think, yeah, I agree that he should. But, I mean, it seems like he... I mean, the main connection has been made, though. Yeah, so, we I mean, know it. No, I mean, the main connection even to Sonya, that he missed that, like, who David Tate is I guess, and all yeah. That. But I think it would also be easier... I mean, it'd be nice to connect, like, this right. is where the necklace is from. This is probably why he's using this necklace or these beads, what they signify to him. Yeah. I mean, but, I mean, you're right now. We know it's David Tate. But he also doesn't want other people to know. She's like, we have to tell everyone. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> I don't want to. Well, yeah, I mean, he doesn't want his dirty business getting out, I'm sure. I mean, he was sleeping That's with somebody, I... I mean. It's already all over the place, I think. We already know he was sleeping with Charlotte. It's not like you can taint his image anymore. Well, we already know. It doesn't mean the whole police department Kitty knows. Kitty knows, which makes What's me that? think everybody well, knows. Well, Kitty, yeah, that's true. Kitty does. Who else is left? Definitely... Hank and uh, Wade. It's, yeah, uh, I mean. There's only two more, more yeah. people. Kitty is, <laughs> Kitty is definitely the office they all guy. Know, <laughs> they all know he's not with his wife right now, and he was sleeping on a bench in the office. I'm sure they know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Oh, there's, there's no, no water, water this time. <laughs> no water. Gosh. We can't give him water anymore. <laughs> I empty it out. I empty it, see? Uh, just as empty. <laughs> as I was, <laughs> this is a bad joke. I was going to say Asante's body right now because uh, that blood was everywhere. That was morbid. This show shows you so much. It does. It, I think it's each ridiculous. Week, it... A little more. Last week with uh, Stoke's head being shot like that image i was like <gasps> i don't know no. I, I come from game of thrones and walking dead i'm just like this show is nothing no not for That's me this is a, a lot for me <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot to handle i'm like man this is like kitty time i feel like i'm back in fifth grade oh, i'm watching gosh. this show <laughs> well i don't <laughs> <laughs> no but it is pretty morbid though you see the actual slicing of the neck open you actually and they held on that. that shot for a yeah. few more yeah, seconds they did. Oh. The normal, like... I was almost thinking, like, when it happened, I was like, man, was that a deep cut? Because we just watched that happen. Wow, that was a deep cut! (laughs) Yeah. Well, at first, I thought maybe it was, like, just one of those, like, scary, like, you know, cut the skin. Well, no, that's what I was thinking at first, too. Like, maybe it was just a scary you thing. And nope, it was straight up. I love how quick he is at it. Like, does he practice this? Like, is this just an acquired skill? Well, he was in the FBI. Yeah, he's in the FBI. Maybe, maybe. But, I, I mean, the average person wouldn't just be able to do that. So quietly and quickly and then just walk out and be like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, everyone on the live chat, Dave's tossing around cups all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and just supposed to agree with you, Paige, Kitty is such a blabbermouth. If you want to keep, keep a secret, don't tell her. Yeah, don't <laughs> tell her. Tell that. Sonya. She'll keep a secret. So, Actually, she doesn't no, like she secrets. Yeah, Sonya doesn't like <laughs> she secrets. She doesn't like She'll blurt it out in front of the whole office as well. Yeah, yeah she will. Just, yeah, totally. Well, but we end up, we end the show, we end the shot with Kenneth 
uh, I keep calling Kenneth David Tate now. David Tate driving off with a clueless Alma, and now instead of romantic music or anything, we start having evil music setting in. So it's like we should like knowing that you should be worried as an audience because like she has no idea. And if we didn't get these cues in about David Tate, we'd have no idea to be worried about this. Yeah, and so now it's just to see what happens. See, that's what you get for wanting revenge. When you try to have revenge by cheating even further, it just keeps the cycle, and then you end up getting murdered, and then... No revenge. It's getting yeah. messy. Yeah, it's getting really messy, but messy, but at the same time, it's kind of getting tied in a little bow. Like, we know where everything fits yeah. at this point. So it's messy in the sense that some people know and some people don't, but we're getting a lot of answers as viewers to this show. Definitely. At least I feel like I'm getting a lot of answers to the questions I oh, have. I feel like that too. That is one of the nice things about them going this quick is you, you don't get bored with it because you are constantly receiving answers. As mm -hmm. Every week you get some new answers. So this week I feel like they review the, reveal a huge amount. Like really everything. Cool they still that. owe us a few, but uh, they did get a lot. Yeah. They owe us, yeah, just a, they just a, a couple. Few, just a lot. But uh, you got to leave a couple out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I feel like lots of payoffs this episode for mm -hmm. sure. Definitely. So with that said, guys, I believe there's some news and gossip. Yes, just a little. After Buzz TV News. It is nothing huge, but if you're looking just for more Huge. Info, yeah, nothing groundbreaking um, in the terms of the bridge cast. But uh, Diane Kruger, she just did an interview. Um, she's the face of a new makeup line, and it was just a little bit about beauty and how she views beauty and saying that, you know, she felt beautiful when she was 20, but now that she's nearing 40, she feels just as beautiful because of all the things she's accomplished in life and where she is. And having what you want and knowing what you want in life makes you feel more beautiful. Uh, she also said she really protects her skin. So if you want to know why she looks so good, she wears a lot of SPF even when she's in the city. Something she said about that. So if you're interested in what she has to say and more about it, you can check her out. It was on E! Online. Uh, you can just search for Diane Kruger and it'll come up. But that was about it. But it's just a little bit more insight. We're hearing more about her now, especially as this show's taking off. So that's nice. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right, I got some comments from you guys from last week's show from YouTube. Thank you guys so much for commenting. Uh, what FC? Thank you so much, Legesi, Legisi again. Thank you for commenting, and Joseph Boza, uh, Legisi pointing out that he thinks Sonia choking herself represents how much this case is affecting her emotionally, bringing back memories from the past, etc. Specifically, how her sister was murdered, which was right. strangled through strangulation. So great point there. Joseph Boza saying maybe Sonia was getting flashbacks about her sister died, and that was why she was trying to choke herself. Uh, for all we know, Sonia could still be going through the process of grief since her sister passed away. Again, agreeing with that statement. So great, some great points from you guys. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You guys rock. I tried not to comment back too much this time. <laughs> no, like, and we had five comments had from five. Paige Sullivan. <laughs> wow, we are a popular show. We've got ten comments, all from Paige Sullivan. All from the host. <laughs> all from the host. <laughs> no, no, no. But we do appreciate your comments, so keep them coming. Yeah, thank you, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some predictions for next week. And it now, down. you're after Buzz TV predictions. Oh. I don't well, know about everyone looking at you. <laughs> oh, I honestly, I think just from looking at the previews, I'm predicting that Alma's going to be in a not so great situation next week, and it's going to be about finding her um, and revenge being taken on Marcus. Uh, Marcus, Marco. Um, so I really just think that David is just, we're just going to see this all developed. Whatever he has planned for Alma and Marco is coming to a head, and we're going to see it happen. Next week, two predictions. Xena will. Show her face. Oh, I oh. hope so. I hope so. And Ray w and Garcella will reach, bring back Ray for some more. I think. You think so? Well, now that I she knows not. what's going on. Ooh. I think. Uh, I think that Graciela is gonna murder Ray. So I think that Ray's actually not gonna get caught by the Fed. I think she's actually gonna get murdered by Graciela. And uh, I yeah. think Charlotte is gonna be the one who has to deal with all the policia about the tunnel. And uh, I agree. Almost definitely gonna be in a lot, a lot of trouble. And uh, David Cross, I think, uh, you know what, I think I kind of agree with you guys. I don't think he, I don't think he could be the full master hide. I feel oh, like David there's got to be, or David Tate, thank you. Okay. It'd be awesome if it was David Cross. Who was yeah, was like, yeah David Cross <laughs> comes in, it was me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think, I agree, I don't think it was David Tate was the full killer. I don't see his intentions behind everything going on. So I, I understand his intentions with Marco. I understand his intentions with, you know, some of the people, but not everyone. So mm -hmm. I feel like there's got to be more to it. 
excited for more. All right, guys. Well, that does it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll definitely see you guys next week. And as always, please, if you want to join us on the live chat as you hear us talking with people on the commentary, Joseph Boza, Ryan Willison, you guys rock on the live commentary. Watch Tower Base, as always. Join us every single week. Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. Pacific time as we wrap up the Bridge After Show or check us out on YouTube or iTunes. As always, After Buzz TV. And guys, I'm Dave Klein. That is K-L-E-I-N. You can find me on Twitter at the Dave Klein, K-L-E-I-N. <laughs> I'm Paige Selwyn, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Paige Sell, and that is Paige with an I. Hi, I'm Tom and Ibercera, and you can find me on Twitter at, at ThomasJR and Instagram at ThomasJ. And that's an easy one. Yes, that is. <laughs> I wish I had that. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.